Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about psychological first aid. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to place a disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purpose. This presentation is not a substitute for professional opinion. For professional opinion, please do contact a psychiatrist. Conflict of interest? None. Psychological first aid. In this video, I am going to discuss what is psychological first aid, where to do psychological first aid, who can do it, who are the beneficiaries, why we need to do it, and what are the steps of psychological first aid. Psychological first aid. It is the first line psychosocial support after any crisis event. That means a first line of action and an immediate intervention in the form of humane, supportive and practical assistance to fellow human beings who recently suffered a serious stressor. Serious stressor such as disaster which can be man-made or else it can be natural disaster, death of a family member or a loved one, accident, robbery, sexual assault, domestic violence and any other stressors. Let's understand what are the crises and what are the way the people react to various stressor or crisis. The people who respond depends upon their age. The adults and children respond differently. In adult, as soon as the disaster strikes or there is a crisis, sometimes there will be shock, there will be numbness, disorientation, confused, severe anxiety, panic attacks, feeling detached from the surroundings. Sometimes some of the adults may become anger, irritable, they become combative. There may be startled response, feeling on the edge. Some people may suddenly become withdrawn, decrease socialization. And to overcome this stress, some people start using drugs, substances like alcohol. Insomnia and altered wake sleep cycle is another form of reaction to any stressor. Multiple aches and pains, somatic complaints is another important which is commonly seen in disaster. Dizziness, restlessness, derealization and depersonalization is another important response to any crisis. I have seen in various disaster, dissociative refuge for extreme distress is common. Acute stress reaction, survivor's guilt, suicidal attempt, suicide, deliberate self-harm, antisocial activities such as violence, looting, stealing, robbing and decoities are the reactions which are common seen, commonly seen during any crisis. But children respond slightly differently to the adult. The children below the age of 5 years, their response is directly dependent upon how the adults behave. If the adults are calm, the children below the 5 years will look to the adult and they respond similar to the adult. But children above the age of 5 years have a response similar to adult, independent of the adult. Invariably, children will have crying spells, clinging behavior, milestone regression, withdrawn, poor socialization, refusing to go outside, refusing to play with other kids, decreased sleep, startled responses. Sometimes, some children become completely numb. Their numbness to that level, they do not talk to anybody and they do not show any kind of response. Sometimes they have non-specific somatic complaints. Let's move into the components of psychological first aid. There are two important components of psychological first aid. One is psychological component, another one is social support component. Both of them have to be given in psychological first aid. Let's understand psychological first aid from the Maslow's pyramid of human needs. If you look at the Maslow's pyramid, the base of the pyramid that is physiological needs, safety needs and belongingness. These are the three important components which has to be delivered in psychological first aid. I will repeat physiological need, safety need and being connected. These are the three important things which are provided in psychological first aid. So to provide this psychological first aid, first ensure the safety of the survivors, protect the survivors from further harm, 
helping the people to address their basic needs like food, water. Assess the needs and concerns. Listen to them. Do not pressurize them to tell them about their story. Helping the people to connect with their loved ones such as family members and friends. So these are the components and also important steps of psychological first aid. Who can do psychological first aid? Similar to physical first aid, anyone who are trained in psychological first aid can deliver psychological first aid. I request you, all of you to learn also physical first aid. Physical first aid and psychological first aid can help you to heal the survivors. And I request you, all of you to learn even physical first aid. Psychological first aid is not a professional counseling. It is not debriefing also. And it is not labeling with mental illness. Psychological first aid is delivered on the premise normal people in abnormal situations such as disaster. So never make any psychiatric diagnosis or mental illness diagnosis for the survivors. Majority of the responses are self-healing and self-limiting. What is the cost of psychological first aid? Psychological first aid is given free of cost, similar to physical first aid. So never charge for psychological first aid. Actually, psychological first aid and physical first aid are the responsibility of individual human being towards the another human being. So it has to be given free of cost. Where it is done? Psychological first aid or physical first aid are done in the vicinity of the disaster. Wherever there is a crisis places and especially like refugee camps, in the ambulance, in the community, the psychological first aid is done. Who are the beneficiaries? Of course, survivors of the disaster or the crisis are the beneficiaries. Don't force psychological first aid on every survivor. Similar to physical first aid is not required to everyone, only few of them have required. Similarly, psychological first aid is required to few of them. Why we need to do? There are two important reasons. One is short term, another one is long term. Short term, it helps the survivors to be feel safe, feel calm, connected and hopeful. In the long term, psychological first aid have found to be decreasing the mental health impact on the survivors. Let's understand what are the ethical do's and don'ts in psychological first aid. Ethical do's, be honest and trustworthy. Respect people's right to make their own decision. Don't decide for them. They may be survivors. They know how to take decision. Avoid your biases and prejudices. Please be very, very careful with this regard. Make it clear to people that even if they refuse help now, they are welcome to access help anytime in future they want help. Respect privacy. Keep the story or the keep the survivor story confidential. Do not disclose to media or any other person. Behave appropriately by considering the person's culture, age and gender. In certain culture and religion, gender is a very big issue. Although you, your intention to provide psychological first aid is excellent, but be very, very sensitive with regard to gender in certain communities. Psychological first aid with regard to what you are not supposed to do. Do not exploit your relationship as a helper with the survivors. Don't ask the person for any money or favor for helping them. Never do that. Don't make false promises or false providing false information. Don't exaggerate your skills. Don't force help on people. Don't be intrusive or pushy or don't force them to tell their story. That is very, very wrong. Don't share the person's story with anyone else. Don't judge the person's actions or feelings or response to the disaster. Don't preach your religion in the place of disaster. It is completely wrong. What are the basic principles of psychological first aid? There are three basic principles. Look, listen and link with the services. So let's discuss all the three. First is look. Look for the safety of yourself and others. When you are going to a disaster zone, check whether there is safety for yourself. If you are safe, look for the safety of the survivors. Check whether some of the survivor requires physical first aid, triage with ambulance, shifting to the hospital. 
If that is done, then look at the people who have serious distress emotional reaction. Those are the people who require psychological first aid. Once you have done look, start for listening. Approach the people who require psychological first aid. Introduce yourself. Ask about people's need and concern. Listen to the people and help them to make them to feel calm and ensure the safety. Once it is done, link them. Link them with the basic needs, access to those services. Provide authentic information. Link with their family members and friends. That is very essential. Link with the relief agencies so that if the survivors need to move from one place to another or else to shift other survivors to the nearest place. And now we will move into psychological first aid skills which you should learn. Things you should say and do. Try to find a quiet place to talk to the survivors. When you please introduce yourself, wear a badge. At the same time, address the survivors by their name is very essential. Engage the survivors, listen to them carefully. Let them know that you are listening to them. Respond by saying whom and noting your right. Sometimes you need to ask question, clarify to know what are the other family members, where are the other survivors so that you can link them with them. Be patient and calm. The helpers or the relief workers being calm is very very transmissible emotion to the survivors. If the relief worker is calm and cool and patient, that will calm the survivor also. Provide factual information. If you do not have information, tell them, I do not know. I will find out and get back to you at the earliest. That is very essential. Acknowledge how the survivors are feeling. At the same time, acknowledge their losses and important event or family members if they have lost. These are very essential. At the same time, validate their emotion. Tell them if they have lost a family member and they are very, very shocked and numb, and you have to validate their emotion by saying, yes, in your situation, anybody in your situation will have the same emotion, same thoughts and same feelings. Allow sometimes silence. Survivors may express their emotion by crying or becoming angry. You have to have a appropriate body posture and voice to talk to the survivors. This is very essential. At the same time, you should know what, what you are supposed not to do. Don't pressurize the survivors to tell their story. Don't interrupt when the survivor is speaking. Don't rush with the story of the survivors. Do not touch the survivors unnecessarily unless they require physical first aid. Don't judge the survivor's experience, emotions and thoughts. At the same time, don't say, you should feel lucky you are survived. Never say that because every survivor's experience in disaster is unique. Don't use technical terms when you are talking to survivors. Don't tell the someone else story to the survivors. At the same time, don't compare one survivor's experience with the another survivors. Don't talk about your own troubles when you are talking about psychological first aid. Don't give false promises and false reassurances. This is very essential. Don't talk about people in negative terms. Try to give hope so that the person starts moving forward. To conclude, my dear friends, in psychological first aid, there are three important components. Look, listen and lick. Look for safety of yourself, safety of the survivors. At the same time, approach them, listen to them carefully. At the same time, validate their emotion. Link them with the social welfare services. Provide authentic information. Connect them with their family members. These are the very simple psychological first aid tips. Please provide psychological first aid for the needy. Thank you very much for your valuable time. Stay safe.